Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. You're probably wondering what this amazing piece of kit behind me is. So this is the Cricut Auto Press. It's kind of like a toasting machine meets a spaceship meets a heat press. It's a heat press. It is so out of this world. It's so different to any heat press that I've ever worked with, I've ever come across. Um, it's it's pretty special actually. So just to preface, the Cricut have obviously sent me this, thank you very much to them. However, my opinions are my own, I'm not obligated to do anything with the products they send me, I don't have to film, I don't even have to talk about them if I don't want to. So I do want to make that very clear that although I'm very grateful that they've sent it to me, my opinions are absolutely my own. For this video, we're just going to go through what the auto press is, how much it is, where you can get it, kind of go through the basics, how you register it, and we're going to do a very quick project. And then in the next video, we're going to go a bit more in depth and we're going to talk about how I feel about it, if I think it's worth it, if I think it's something you should purchase. So make sure you watch this one and then watch the next one as well. So the Cricut Auto Press is a heat press. It is a different take on your traditional clamp down heat press. I have to say, I am dying to make a cheese and ham toasty in this, but Cricut have told me that that is not something you should try. I still may try it one evening though. The Cricut Auto Press is so easy to work with. It's so simple, it's, I absolutely love it. It takes all the guesswork out of doing your pressing. And it's just a tiny little bit gadgety as well. So let's talk about what you'll get in your box first of all. So of course you get your Cricut Auto Press, you get your power leads, you get your USB cord, you get your very, very cool Auto Press pod, which we will go into a little bit later, but this pod is fantastic. It's so revolutionary. I've never actually seen anything like it before on a heat press. And you get your auto press mat as well, which again we'll talk about a little bit later. So in the US, the auto press is going to retail at $999. Sorry, I hear you cry. Sorry, did you just say $999, Jen? Yes, yes, I did. But in this video and the next one, we'll explore that a little bit more and we'll talk about perhaps why even though that price seems really quite exorbitant, actually when you look at other presses in the same realm as the auto press, it's actually at the lower end of the price scale. And in terms of what the auto press can do and the abilities it will give you, not just as a hobbyist, but for a business as well, it is an investment, it's a real investment but it's an investment that some of you will be worth making. We don't have a price for here in the UK yet. I am waiting on the UK price. As soon as I have it, I will put it in the description below. But in the States, it's going to be $999. So availability. So from May the 3rd in the States, the Autopress will be available on HSN. And then on May the 16th in the States, it will be available on Cricut.com, Joann's and Michael's. And then on June the 15th in the States, it will be available elsewhere. So in the States, it's May the 3rd for HSN, May the 16th for Cricut.com, Michael's and Joann's, and then the 15th of June for elsewhere. And here in the UK, we will be getting the auto press at the start of May. We've been told it should be between the 1st and kind of the 5th of May, but we will keep you all updated on that for the UK. But Cricket are aiming for the start of May for the UK, and as I say for the States, it's May the 3rd on HSN, and then May the 16th for Cricket.com, Michaels and Joanne. So this is the Cricket Auto Press box. It is a real sturdy box, and I just wanted to show this so you can understand that this is and a real kind of serious machine. So it comes in this box, the box has actually got handles on the side, like so, so it makes it slightly easier to lift this. The press weighs a whopping 54 pounds, which is about four stone. 
This box is incredibly well packaged. In here, the auto press is nice and snugly fit. All the leads and everything that come with it have got their own pockets they sit in. So the box is really rigid. It, your auto press is nice and secure in here. And as I say, it's got the handles as well. So initially, the auto press weighs a lot. The auto press on its own is 54 pounds, which is about 4.1 stone, which doesn't seem, I mean, it's a, it's four stone, but when you lift a child of four stone, it's okay because the weight's distributed. Whereas this, that weight is quite concentrated. So four stone actually feels a lot heavier. I cannot lift this. Um, obviously those, lots of you know, I've had a hysterectomy recently, so I'm not allowed to lift anyway, but I physically don't think that I could lift this without hurting myself under normal circumstances. Even just moving it for me at the moment is really difficult. So if you have upper body strength issues like I do, or you've got some health problems which limit your movement or limit your strength, um, you've got tummy problems so you can't like put real strain on your tummy, you are going to need some help to get this into place. Now once it's in place, that's different. Once it's in its home, it's so simple and easy to use, you don't need any strength with it at all. But initially, for getting your box, getting it out the box, getting it in its home position, if you do struggle with heavy things like I do, you are going to need help because it is heavy. And it is quite awkward to kind of move as well. So you are gonna need someone to help you to get it in place. But as I say, once it's in place, it's a whole different ball game. So the auto press is going to need somewhere permanent to live. It's very different to an easy press. The easy presses are great. We can get them in and out. We can put them away. They're fantastic. The auto press is heavy. It's a lot bigger. So it is going to need a permanent residence. So just to give you some dimensions that when the auto press is closed or in sitting position as Cricut call it, it's got a width of 16.63 inches, a height of 6.62 inches, and a depth of 26.07 inches. However, once it's open, that height extends to 25.14 inches. So you do want to make sure that you've got height clearance for when your auto press actually opens fully. Mine just sits under my shelving conveniently enough. Now the auto press is fully automatic, so it takes all of that work out. I don't know if some of you remember, but years ago I had uh, a swing press that you would then clam shut and it was awful. It was so bad, I got rid of it because it was just a nightmare. Granted, it was superbly cheap. Um, so, you know, you pay your money, you take your chance, but it was, it was horrific. Everywhere around it would get super hot. So I was always really worried about having the grandchildren in here, the cat in here. So Bisley was not allowed in here when that thing was on. On top of that, it had real electricity problems, which is a completely another story, but I couldn't actually close it. It was so heavy that I actually needed this kind of stick handle thing to jam into the top of the press so that I could then lever it shut. I just did not have the upper body strength. The auto press completely takes all of that away because it is automatic and it's so light, it removes any of that upper body strength that you may not have. As with all Cricut presses, it comes with that protection. So it's super safe to use, of course, but the heat stays within the platen. So you've got a platen here at the top, and then of course you've got your lower platen. All that heat stays on those plates. The press gets a little bit warm on the outside, but it's not burning warm. It's warm to touch, it's not burning hot, so it's perfectly safe. And the area around the press does not get hot at all. So it does concentrate that heat just to the plate. So it's so safe to have 
the children running around to have the cat or the dog in here so Bisley will probably find a home lying on top of this after it's been on for a couple of hours because it'll be nice and toasty but not burning hot so it is super safe like all cricket presses and it really concentrates that heat so you don't have to worry about the rest of your area getting hot that was always a concern with my previous press this is completely different and as I say for me because I do have real upper body strength issues this makes it so easy to operate the other thing with a lot of presses is that you have to work out your time your temperature and your pressure a lot of them require a manual pressure change Again, the autopress does not. So the autopress comes with this very cool pod. Now the pod is what does all the controlling for you. And the great thing is it actually has four pre-made settings which you can either keep as they are or you can change them. So the current settings for the pod is number one is Sport Flex onto polyester. Preset two is Everyday Iron On onto cotton. Preset 3 is glitter iron on onto cotton and preset 4 is infusible ink onto polyester. As I say you can change the presets, it comes with those four and you've always got the ability to have four presets but you can change them. The Cricut.com heat guide is going to be updated for the auto press and you can manually put in your time and temperature as well. The great thing about the auto press is it's not just for iron on, it's not just for infusible ink. You can use it with sublimation. I am going to be using it with sublimation. It's not just for t-shirts and tote bags. You can put anything up to two inches into your auto press. And because it's got this amazing cantilever and it's all kind of automatic, it can work out the pressure based on how low or how high your item is and the settings that you've input. Which I just think is amazing because then you don't have to think about pressure at all. Which takes a lot of work out of working with a heat press because pressure is always one of those things, even with the easy presses, what's a low pressure, what's a hard pressure, what's a medium pressure? You know, as you get to feel your press, you get used to those pressures, but every time a new one comes out, you have to work it all out again. Well, with the auto press, you don't. I've got so many sublimation items to try in here. I've got phone cases. I've got little bits of wood. I've got bibs. I've got mouse mats. Like, I am so excited for this. Of course, the sublimation side of it and using other items such as mouse mats, um, glass photo frames, the sublimation glass photo frames, there is going to be a little bit of trial and error with them because of course the heat guide settings are mainly for things like clothing and other Cricut blanks but the auto press is more than capable of working with sublimation and sublimation materials and products so I'm very very excited for that and I cannot wait to explore it but it takes a lot of the guesswork out because of the pressure so although the time and temperature you may have to do a little bit of research on the website from where you got your sublimation products. It does take a lot of work out of it and it's so easy to program. The top temperature of the autopress is 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees centigrade. And it's really easy to change from Fahrenheit to centigrade. If you turn your pod over, You'll see here we've got Fahrenheit and centigrade. So all we need to do is just move that button from one to the other. So let's talk about our platens. Our platens or our plates are 12 inches by 15 inches. So you could do a full sheet of infusible ink in here in one go without any worries. Because it's a special ceramic, it feels really, really cold, but it heats up in eight minutes. Your auto press also comes with your auto press mat which has been specifically made for the auto press. You do not want to use an easy press mat in here, you definitely want to be only using the auto press mats, they've been made specifically for the auto press. If I turn it over you'll see it's got all these grips on it which stop it from moving which means that with the mat 
and your heat resistant tape, things like sublimation and infusible ink will stay exactly where you place them. So you don't need to worry about any movement. You get one auto press mat with your auto press and then you can purchase other ones separately. In the States, they're going to retail at $50. Again, I don't have the UK price for the extra mats, but as soon as I do, I will put it in the description below. But you do get one with it. These are great if you're going to be batch making. I've got a load of party bags that I need to do and I want to personalize them. So I would actually buy a couple of extra mats so that I can have a batch making process going on. The back of your auto press has two ports. One is your power port and one is your USB port. Your USB is used to connect your pod and the USB also goes into your computer so that you can register your pod and your auto press. The auto press has three buttons on the side. You've got your power button and then you've got your unlock and your lock. So nice and easy to open, we're just going to unlock and then to close it, we're just gonna pull this down nice and easy because of that cantilever and then lock it. It could not be easier to work with. So you are going to need to register your auto press. Now you only need to do it once, but you are going to need a desktop, be that Windows or Mac. Once it's registered, it's registered, you don't have to do it again, but initially you are going to need a desktop of either a Windows or a Mac to be able to register it. So I'm gonna show you now how you can register it. So first of all, we're going to go into Design Space. We're going to go up to our settings. We're going to select New Product Setup, Heat Press, and then you'll find the Auto Press in there. It's really simple and easy to register your auto press. You want to follow the instructions. They're very simple and easy to follow. So you're going to obviously put your power cord in and you're going to switch your power on. You're then going to get your pod. You're going to place the USB into the pod and then the USB end you're going to place into your desktop. Once it's found your pod, you can then select continue and it will then check that you're happy for your auto press to be added to your Cricut ID. You're going to agree to that and select continue and it's then going to update your pod. Once that's done, you can select continue and it will then get you to remove the USB from your computer and put it into the back of your auto press. So your pod is now connected to your auto press. Once that's done, you can select next. It's then worth going through the next stages. So it will show you when you complete the setup, that you want to make sure that you're on a sturdy base, that your auto press can open fully, and you've got your power on, you can then select next. You can then select complete and that is it complete. So you are now registered. Your auto press is connected to your pod. Your pod has been registered in design space. So you are now all ready to go. My press just by unlocking it. I've got my auto press mat in here ready to go. And I've got my temperature and time pod. I'm gonna switch my press on and my pod will come on. Now I have got these automatic settings, but I'm not going to use these. I'm going to do a manual set just by using the knob here. So I'm gonna do 385 for 60 seconds. Now it sounds a little bit like a very quiet fan going off. There's not a huge amount of noise coming from the auto press. It is like a very quiet fan, but there is noise. So whilst this is heating up, I've got some Cricut cosmetic bags. I've got my lint roller. So I'm just going to give that a quick lint roll. I've got my infusible ink design with infusible ink pen. I'm going to place that onto my cosmetic bag. 
and I've also got some of the Cricut extra strong heat resistant tape which I'm going to use to make sure that my infusible ink stays in place. Now with our easy presses we always have to be careful because of the zips and the seams. The auto press you don't really have that option because there's no way that you can avoid the zips or the seams especially on a small item. A large item you could maybe have them kind of hanging out the front here but with an item like this you don't have the option to avoid it but because of the pressure on the auto press and because it is automatic it will be able to tell that it needs a bit more pressure because it will know that it's sitting on something slightly higher up. I've used the cosmetic bags before they're really really good so I know that I don't need to put anything on the inside they won't bleed into the inside of my cosmetic bags but because this is polyester I am going to protect my plate and I am going to put my parchment over it. Same with iron-on, if I'm doing just one layer of iron-on and I've got my iron-on carrier sheet, I don't need any parchment, but if I'm going to do layers then I need to make sure that I protect my iron-on from the heat of the plate. That's now ready to go, we've just heard it beep. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down and when I pull it down I'm going to push down on the handle You'll hear it beep and then it will automatically start counting down. So I'm going to pull this down, push and let go. And that has now started the countdown for me. Now when it's finished, when the countdown gets to zero, it's going to beep again and this is automatically going to come up. So you want to make sure you're not leaning on it, you haven't got anything placed on it and that the area around it is nice and clear so that it can just pop up because it does just automatically come straight up. So that's now done. Now, now the auto press can be used over and over again, but when it's stood idle, it does have an automatic shut off of 13 minutes. I'm not going to be using this again for a few minutes. So rather than having it like this, where it's all hot, all I'm going to do is just switch it off and let it cool down. Now this is still really warm so I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit and then once it's cooled down all I'm going to do is pull back that tape and reveal my design. You can see apart from that little bit at the top there pretty much all of that colour has gone so it could have done with being just a little bit down from the seam so that's something that I'll take away from this is that just make sure it's not sat, your design isn't sat right on the seam. You want it down maybe about an inch or half an inch. But I absolutely love that. There is so much to explore with the auto press. We need to really go in depth with it. I've got sublimation to try with it. I've got different sublimation blanks. I've got telephone cases. I've got bibs. I've got glass. Uh, photo frames, I've got slate photo frames, I've got so many different items I want to try in the auto press and I'm so so excited to do so. It's gonna be a couple of weeks until we really start seeing what this can do and it's gonna be at least until it becomes available to purchase until people really do understand its capabilities but first impressions are I'm really excited and I'm really impressed. It's a lot of money, there's no getting around that. What I will say is that I have looked at presses that are similar to the auto press. The auto press is unique but there are similar kind of along the same vein presses out there. They start at a minimum of sort of $2,000 to $2,500 and they go all the way up to over 4000 So yes, $999 is a lot. However, in terms of what it can do and comparing it to other presses along the same vein, it's actually on the lower scale. It's very impressive.
it takes a lot of the guesswork out. You don't have to worry about pressure. You haven't got to worry about the heat. I mean, there is no heat around my desk. It's only on the plate. Even the press itself is just a little bit warm. So from a safety point of view, in terms of pets and children, yes, it's heavy, but once it's in its home, it's forever home, it's so easy to operate. Like I have, I'm so weak, I don't have upper body strength and I do have dexterity problems. And this is so easy for me to operate because it's all automatic. The auto press isn't going to be for everyone. If you're a hobbyist and you do iron on every so often and you do infusible ink every so often, look, this isn't an investment for you. You're better off getting one of the other easy presses. I'm just being honest. If you are a business or you're someone that does create a lot of iron on or a lot of infusible ink designs and you're someone that's really wanting to go into sublimation, then this is something to consider because A, it takes all of the fuss out of it, it's simple and easy to use and it's great for doing batch items. Then the auto press is definitely something to think about. It is an investment, there's no getting around that, but for some people it's going to be a worthwhile investment. Would I go out and buy the auto press? It's always a difficult question for me because of the channel, yes, the answer is yes. Like if, if Cricut hadn't sent it to me, I would have to have gone out and bought it at launch so that I could then review it and show it. Me as Jen, as a hobbyist, would I have purchased the auto press? Not immediately, I wouldn't because it is such an investment. However, I think given time and seeing what everyone was doing with it and being able to see just how easy it was to use and having had a bad experience with a press, I think two or three months down the line, I would have gone and bought it. Yes, I can put my hand on my heart and say that. So no, not immediately, but yes, after I'd seen it and I'd seen how reliable it was and just how great it is and easy to use, Yes, two or three months down the line, I would have invested at it as it, even just as a hobbyist, which is what I am. I'm not a business, I am a hobbyist, but the channel kind of changes that because I have to get hold of everything and review everything. So it's always a tricky question and I have to kind of put myself away from Crifty when I think about that question. But yes, I can honestly say that a few months down the line, I would have gone and purchased this. And if Cricut took it away tomorrow, if they rang me and said, sorry, it was an accident, we shouldn't have sent it to you, I would say to them, okay, well, can I keep it until it becomes available? And then I'll go and buy one. Because actually, I would buy it. I would put my money where my mouth is and I would purchase it. I'm gonna go into more detail in the next video about settings and we're gonna do another press. I'm gonna talk a bit more about it because I'll have played with it a bit more. My initial kind of things on it are very positive, but I wanna have a bit more of a play. I wanna explore the seams and the zips a bit more and kind of see what's going on with that. So make sure you watch the next video and I'll give you more of an update. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Don't forget for the States, it will be available 3rd of May on HSN, then the 16th of May on cricket.com, Michaels and Joannes. And here in the UK, it will be available at the start of May, anywhere between the 1st and sort of the 5th. That may change, but we'll keep you all updated. $999 in the States. Don't have a price for it here yet in the UK, but as soon as I do, I'll put it in the description below. Please do subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Go and watch the other video, go and watch the videos on the new hat press. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, join our Facebook group, UK Cricket Creators. And as always, just thank you for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.